HMS Charybdis was one of the first Dido-class anti-aircraft cruisers, laid down in November 1939, launched in September 1940, and commissioned in December 1941, but like many of the class, would never have her originally intended armament fitted. Whilst as designed, she was supposed to have 10 5.25-inch guns in five twin turrets, these weapons were proving more difficult to build than anticipated, and although selected in part due to commonality with the King George V class, which used the same turrets and guns for their secondary battery, it was not possible to supply the guns in time for the ships fitting out, partially due to priority for the guns having been given to said battleships. In peacetime, this would simply have meant a slight delay in entry to service, but in the middle of a war, any delay into service, especially for an anti-aircraft ship, was unacceptable. Instead, the Admiralty cast around for other good dual-purpose guns that they had in stock. As it turned out, a number of twin 4.5-inch mounts had been manufactured after experiments turning some of the C-class cruisers into anti-aircraft ships. These mounts, intended to refit the D-class cruisers, were then instead transferred to the Dido program, and whilst a number of the class would leave dock simply without sea turret, Charybdis and her sister ship Scylla would be equipped with four twin 4.5-inch guns instead, giving them a similar level of main battery firepower to the tribal-class destroyers that were one-third their displacement, albeit that Scylla and Charybdis had significantly better elevation on their main armament for anti-aircraft use, and of course considerably better protection and secondary armament as well. Initially, Charybdis's other weapons consisted of two quadruple 40mm pom-poms, two quad 50 caliber machine guns, and a single 4-inch gun, plus two triple torpedo tubes, one per side. Eventually, all the guns, apart from the 4.5-inch, would be removed and replaced by numerous single and twin 20mm orlicans, with the pom-poms marked for reuse in other ships. After a short stay with the home fleet, she would be assigned to the area where her anti-aircraft battery would get the most work out, the Mediterranean. Basing out of Gibraltar and supporting various aircraft carriers on aircraft ferry runs to support the defence of Malta. Interspersed with these efforts were the much larger convoy runs to supply Malta with other stores such as oil, food and ammunition, with Charybdis acting as an anti-aircraft defence, anti-submarine warfare, carrier defence and overall coordination ship as circumstances dictated. Due to her lighter armament, both she and Scylla had been set up as flagships, which made them well suited to various roles such as backup, command and coordination vessels. By the end of 1942, and with an active part in Operation Torch under her belt, the tables had somewhat turned in the Mediterranean and she was recalled to the United Kingdom for refit and reassignment. This meant the early and middle parts of 1943 were spent in the North Sea and the Atlantic on patrols and escort duty, but she popped back into the Mediterranean to drop off General Eisenhower and support the Allied landings in Italy, after which she returned to the UK. Her last action would come in October 1943, when she was assigned, along with two fleet and four Hunt-class destroyers, to intercept the German ship Munsterland, which was carrying strategic materials. This did not go well, though. The Kriegsmarine had assigned six minesweepers, two patrol boats equipped with radar, and five smaller Type 39 destroyers to escort the blockade runner. The British force swept in using its own radar, but the Germans detected this and sent the Munsterland out of the area whilst the destroyer flotilla moved to engage. They were in turn spotted by Charybdis on radar, but a breakdown in communications between her escorting destroyers and herself meant that the German ships managed to spot the cruiser and launch almost their entire torpedo complement, 24 out of a possible 30, at the Charybdis. Due to the lack of visual confirmation of the radar targets as hostile, the cruiser's own guns remained silent despite the considerable damage they might have been able to do to the German vessels, and shortly thereafter she was struck by two torpedoes in quick succession both flooding parts of the machinery spaces and as a result sending her to the bottom within 30 minutes. Another torpedo blew the bows off one of the Hunt-class destroyers. The German ships withdrew upon the launch of their torpedoes and so ended the battle which gave the last clear Kriegsmarine victory of the war. There was one bright spot to the ship's loss though. 
it caused a complete revision of the procedures that were used when it came to intercepting and engaging German blockade runners and their escorts, and thus her final legacy would be seeing over two-thirds of all subsequent operations succeeding in taking out their targets with minimal to no losses on the British side. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.